Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube? Playing some Camazots today for the A through Z series, and I'm excited about this one because I actually really like Camazots. Camazots is a very good dual character, and I like him a lot. I'd say he's probably about the same as Al Kuang, give or take. Maybe I like Al Kuang a little bit more, but I actually ended up losing a game in the Al Kuang video, so, you know, I shouldn't be too cocky about, like, saying that I like him and that he's good. Just play it like it, play it, play it normal, play it cool, bro. Be, be cool, be cool, be cool. <laughs> I think we are going to start the beads, even though uh, I'm a pretty decent character at avoiding the execute. I mean, I have healing, I have a jump, CC immune ult, all that good stuff. Um, but even with that, I still think we just we just buy the beads, play it safe. Why not? I thought you were hawking. Turns out on someone way better. <laughs> Wait, what? Why did it cut off? Dude, you guys see that? It's like cutting off my litter. Litter. Well, I don't want to type it again if I like typed it correctly the first time. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever, man. Well, this, this is already a good video. I'm playing a god I like. This guy seems chill. He's messaging me in a chill manner. And we got to make fun of Hawken all in the same intro. Like, this is, this is good already. Might as well just stop recording. I got everything we need. Just like Al Kuang. Well, I mean, you can invade with Al Kuang too, but just like uh, when I played Al Kuang, not this Al Kuang. But uh, I'm starting the blue buff because this god do be kind of mana hungry. Oh my goodness. He's Al Kuanging me in the early game, dude. I actually think this matchup is pretty even, slash, uh, I mean, not even. Right now, it's, you know. Uh, Al Kuang favored a little bit, but I think once we get mid late game, uh, Kamzat should win this pretty easily, I might add. Hopefully, that's the idea. That's the theory, but right now he definitely has a better early game. Because he has arguably better clear, eh, about the same, but he has more fight potential, I would say, with the dragons. If I can two this big minion, I'd be pretty happy with that, not gonna lie. Because that'll allow me to get... Too easy. Too easy. I mean, we, we, we could probably kill him here. Okay, he's shelled. <laughs> Alright, so he misplayed. He allowed me to get the red. He allowed me to hit it with my one. And then he, he missed time to shell a little bit. I mean, it wasn't that bad. It's just you have to be very, very particular about when you shell versus Kamazots because he can just kind of wait it out. Um, and I think I might have been able to kill him even if I didn't wait it out. Like if I just swooped on him and then hit him with the one. But the question would be, do I land that like max range one on the way out kind of thing? So definitely an interesting situation. Overall, he has a Bancrofts now. So as much as I love the fact that I just destroyed him a second ago we do have to play a little bit scared one of those like if i land all of my abilities we're kind of okay for the most part but if i miss even one it's very sus and uh, i also can't let the fact that like the beginning of the fight if i'm winning the beginning of the fight a little bit i can't let that go to my head because i gotta remember that he has bankrupt so he actually gets stronger as uh, as the fight goes on you know the lower health he gets the more power he gets so we can see him here, so if he tries to bait around this corner, we can own him. Like, if he stood right here, I mean, and tried to wait for me to come around. He did not, though. He does have lower health than us, but a reminder that Al Kuang passive is healing, and he has lifesteal. So, while he is poked out, he can get that health up pretty quickly. Ooh. Clear this way. Predicted the juke. Ooh. Dude, we were just stuffing this guy, man. We were, we were owning him. I, I want to stop his back. If I can, because the blue is spawning. Yeah. I think that should be enough time. Engaging hostiles. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man. That wave should be mostly cleared. And then I think what we do here is we actually just hit this guy and we get this guy on the ground and we use him to our advantage. Sword. 
If he presses two, I'm either gonna jump away or I'm gonna ult him probably. Just do something to try to avoid some of his damage mainly. All right, well, I guess he's just dead. All right, well, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, uh, he's just been deceased. Uh, not much to say about that one. He let me hit. Me, he let me hit him with the abilities, and then my abilities lowered his health bar down to zero. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what happened there. I think the main thing is like I'm leveling the one. The one does more damage for sure. But my two has a 40% slow on it, so if he lets me hit him with that, it's kind of just Jover for him. It's Jover! Right, let me get the XP on that. Cool beans, jump over the wall. We're not looking to fight here. We're looking to clear this as fast as possible and skedaddle. Because we have tons of gold. Absolute trucking the gold number. Um, let's get this and let's get a red pot, why not? Could have went Pestilence instead of Genji's. It would have been pretty decent. I'm just going to go Brawlers this game, though. Because uh, I am going to go Blink. And uh, I think Blink beads Genji's. Like, you know, I get to Blink and use my abilities and then get the Genji's proc after. It's pretty solid. Uh, I could have also just went like a Serrated or a Hydra's. But that makes it... a I, Like, basically, that's how you snowball a lead harder. Is by going more damage like that. But it's also how you throw a lead. If you mess up at all, you, you can throw your lead pretty easily. With the defense, it's like the safest option. For sure, in the sense of, uh, I can make some misplays and still be perfectly fine. It's how, how, how you maintain your lead. He did proc my Genjis there. Okay. Okay. Interesting series of events. <laughs> I guess he just, like, uh... I don't know. I don't know how to, like, analyze this stuff because I don't really know what he's thinking. I guess he thought that uh, he could just stand his ground and lifesteal a bit. He probably also, to be fair, didn't expect me to have uh, my cooldowns back up immediately like that. Because I did get my cooldowns back very quickly. I'm going to go Serrated and then Brawlers, probably. I did get my cooldowns back super quick because 10% here, 10% with uh, the the Genjis, 10% on the Power Potion, and most importantly, the Genjis proc gave me my, some of my cooldowns back as well, so... Goes how it goes. Hiya! Oh. Well, he procced my Genjis, you fool! Oh, dude, he's actually avoiding my twos now, though. Lan whether Kamazots lands his two or not is actually, like, the biggest deal. As far as uh, he win whether he wins the fight or not. But it's not just damage, it's a slow and it's a heal. It might even be... Oh my gosh, dude, I forgot that I <laughs> just attacked him. I wanted to go in, with, pick up the door, and go in and disable the thingy, but... We cannot, alas. I was just owning this guy, man. I kind of feel bad. There's not much he can do, though, truthfully. I mean, I'm not trying to pretend like this guy's playing perfectly, but... Aside from the fact that uh, he played the early game wrong, there really isn't a lot that Alquan can do in this. <laughs> there isn't a lot that Alquan can do in this matchup uh, mid late game. Granted, he he's not supposed to lose the early game. Oh wait, oh he got the red. He's not supposed to lose the early game as hard as he's losing it right now. But um, once we got to mid game, it definitely would go like this for sure. He is four levels down. Right, we'll get that. We'll get that. Honestly, let's just upgrade my blink. I'm trying to blink as much as possible. As much as possible. Humanly possible. Oh, dude, I need to get this red buff or this blue buff stack on my passive here. Bull Demon is spawning soon. Will he go for it again? Again. He gave me my Genji's proc. He did not avoid the two damage this time. I could have beat that. Oh, I'm such an old man, dude. I can see you, little bro. He does have a Chrono Spin in, so I wouldn't be surprised if his uh, if his one was coming up. But unfortunately, I guess it was still down for him. 
but yeah, I can see him in the stealth. I can kite him pretty well. I, I do arguably the same amount of burst. I have anti-heal on my kit. I honestly don't remember if the anti-heal is on his two or his three game results, I mean. But uh, overall, I just think that Kim is, I mean, like, he just kind of does what Al Kuang does, but better, at, the, at least in the matchup. I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to say that Al Kuang doesn't have, or that Kamazots has more winning matchups than Al Kuang. It's probably similar, but in the actual matchup, Kamazots definitely should win, in my opinion. Uh, that was a bit of a short one, eight minute surrender. So I think I'm just going to skip on to another game. Hope you guys enjoyed this match. And, you know, maybe not, but hopefully, hopefully we get a, a better match in the next one. See you guys there. All right, here we are on to the second game. We're against an Anubis this time. And I'm using a different skin to help you guys differentiate the two games, you know? Also, I like this skin a lot, to be honest. Uh, I like the other, I like the, the robot one the most, but I think this one's pretty clean. Uh, mainly because I like the voice lines. I like the random things he says. I don't use this one too often, but it is pretty funny. Uh, we're going to get a beads and we're going to get... I think we always just get horny with it, you know? Like, I I'll be honest, any of these shards are good on Kamazots. Like, I don't know what that says. Like, if that just means he's OP or what. But, like, this is sick for the all-in. This is sick for multiple reasons. This is sick for the all-in. This is sick just because all of his cooldowns are really impactful and whatnot. Uh, I think I'm just going to stick with the horn shard because it's the most versatile as far as uh, you can use it defensively or offensively. You can with the wing shard too because it gives you a little bit of movement speed. But on a character like Kamazots that has tons of mobility and healing as well, uh, the cooldowns are definitely more defensive than uh, movement speed will be. So, Yes sir, yes sir. Also, I hear a super loud... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. It is trash day, isn't it? I just remembered that. Wait, I feel like they're running super late. It's like the afternoon now. I don't know why they'd be running. Usually, the trash people come in the morning, but I think they're running, like, super late today or something. Or maybe that's just an unrelated truck, but it sounds like a sounds like a garbage truck. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I don't think you can, because I can barely hear it, to be honest. It's pretty far away, but it does sound like there's a garbage truck over there. Who knows what's happening? Oh. He did the smalls. Okay, so he's gonna hit. He's gonna hit level five off of this. Oh wait, he didn't even wait. Did he? Okay, so he started, dude. I feel like this happens in so many of these videos where, like, I just start talking about something, or in this case, I was muted. But long story short, they start the red, and then I just forget that they didn't do their blue, and so I just, I just let this guy get everything for free. I granted, Anubis has a really good early game. Um, now Kamazots wins this matchup incredibly hard mind you but the early game still probably favors anubis he just has faster clear better clear overall um now i can kill him if he misplays especially because he's uh, about half hp but uh most anubis probably won't give you that free kill this guy seems to know he seems to be aware he's sitting under his tower he's looking a little bit low on the, the mana department too and he doesn't have a blue buff so Ooh, he missed I think he just ulted that. <laughs> I think he just ulted that. Okay. Interesting. His wrap was down, so we took advantage there and uh, just, you know, poked him out a little bit. We might have been able to kill him with the ult if he didn't have a shell. That's the problem. Like, if he had, like, a beads for no reason, really, I don't know why he would have a beads. But let's say he had a beads. I probably could have killed him there. Just went into the air and swooped on him while he's ulting or whatever. But uh, he does have the shell, so... I think we played that pretty appropriately. Leave me be! Back off! Yeah, I love this skin. It's so funny. Also, did he block my clear or did I just miss or what? What just happened, man? <laughs> back off! Right Woohoo! <laughs> See you around. What a good voice pack, man. Oh, this guy went Typhons first and not Bancrofts. I've actually seen quite a few Anubis players try that. I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's better than just going Bancrofts is the thing. Like, people like it because it, it makes them feel like their second item is a little bit more powerful. Like, that Typhons with a tier 2 Bancrofts is more powerful than a, a Bancrofts with a tier 2 Typhons, basically. And, you know, that's mostly true, but... Uh, I, me personally, I still would rather just rush the Bancrofts 
and get 5 billion early game power. But hey, man, maybe maybe this is the play and I just don't know about it. I don't pretend to be the min-max Anubis guy, right? I really need to hit this buff with my 2. Even if I don't get it, I need to hit it with my 2. What? Dude, oh, my old man reflexes, dude. Holy. I just turned 24 recently, and I guess that makes me an old man now. I don't know. Uh, dude, that was actually the worst buff secure of all time for him. Like, he, like he was basically giving that to me for free. <laughs> and I said, no, dude. I sent it back to him. I gave it back. I was like, no, I don't need that. That's fine. You can have it. Because, like, the reason why I say it's such bad buff secure is because it's predictable damage and it's tick damage. Like, you know, it's not burst damage. So, like, it's so easy to steal it right there, but not if you're a slowpoke like me, I suppose. Where are the Chesters at, dude? Do they spawn in the back, perhaps? Be right back. Be right back. Same same thing as last game. I would I would really like a pestilence, and perhaps pestilence is the best play. But I'm gonna just stick with my guns here. Stick with my blink Genji's. Pro I say blink because Genji's is stronger when you can get on get on them and use your abilities really quickly. And like they have to respond. Like basically, if you ambush them, they hit you second. And if they hit you second, you're getting the Genji's proc guaranteed on like most of your abilities, right? That's essentially the thought process. Oh my god, his one just did 5 jillion damage to me. He still has a shell too. Oh, dude. Early game Anubis, OP. Also, to be fair, he does have his defense item completed and I do not. So like, if I had a full Genji's there, that fight actually probably does go my way. But I did use my beads. I got to keep that in mind. I, he did get me to... Oh, and I messed that up. Okay. This is not looking good, boy. Dude, I saw this always happens when I'm against Anubis, though. What? Dude, I swear I am 100% convinced that some players don't want to win. Like, their goal is actually to lose, unironically. Like, their goal is to lose without surrendering. They, they, they just hate winning, you know? Why would you go for Bull Demon there? Why? In what world? Like, you're not even going to get the tower or anything. I guess he wants it to, like, just to dive me, I guess. I, I don't know. But he's not going to get the tower off of that. He's not going to get anything off of that. He just gave me a free kill, which allows me to, uh, you know, do more in this early game. Also, is the anti-heal on my jump or is it on my two? Okay, it's on my two. All right, good to know. Against an Anubis, that's really important. See, like, that's what I mean. That's how easy it should have been to secure it last time, too. Oh, wait. I need to respect the one damage. His one is going to hit really hard. Okay, there's the one. Maybe I should have went and got that that blue or that red, rather. I'm not going to be able to contest this. I can maybe kill him, though, even if he steals this. And we steal it with a jump. GG. GG. Yeah, you had a good run, pal. Nah, it's game over for you, little bro. The only difference of like what happens here is whether I oh, whether I want to ult or not. That's the only difference is do I burn my ult or do I not? Because I can ult and end him faster there or I can just hold it and make it a little bit awkward and make it look like he's turning on me. When he's not, I just don't want to ult him. We'll pick up this blue buff. Pick up the blue buff. No big deal. No big deal. Moink. Moink. No, we have 3,000 gold in hand. Yeah, this game's over. It's Jover. Had a good run, no problem. And just like I said in the Alquang video, which is ironic because, again, I lost near the end after, like, three games. But uh, just like the Alquang video, this is honestly... <laughs>
unironically how most of my Camazon's games go because like the dual population just isn't that great to be honest like there's just not that many good players in the queue Ex like experienced players against playing like uh experienced against stuff like this i mean and so you kind of just when you pick gods like alquang or Camazots or just anyone that's super super good early like Camazots isn't amazing early but he's not bad early and he scales into the mid game really well and alquang super good early Ola Run, super good early. Anubis, super good early. Gods like that. Maybe Anubis a little bit less, because I'm also just terrible at Anubis, I think. I have no discipline when I play that character. But, like, a lot of my games, the people just get snowballed. They usually die about, I'd say, three to five times, and then they surrender. And if you want to check my, the Camazot's leaderboard, I think I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to stick this. There's his ult, he wasted it. And perhaps jump on him here, or blink on him rather. Don't know why he's pushing up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Um. you know, since I was just another uh, surrender, I guess we'll do exactly what we did with the Alquang video. We're going to do a third game. We're going to make this a three-parter. Ladies and gentlemen, whether I get a surrender near the end or whether I get a real game that goes all the way to the end or whether I get a real game that goes all the way to the end and I lose. Either way, I will be playing a third match and I will be putting it in this video and, uh, you know, whatever, man. Hopefully we don't lose like we did in the Alquang video. <laughs> all right, see you guys there. All right, here we are into the third match against a Poseidon this time. Another unlucky matchup for him. I'm going to be honest, guys, after bans, you know, if you're curious, go back to the beginning of the video, and you saw my my bans for the most part. That's what I would ban every single game. Um, there's not a lot of gods that I like. That's why Camelot is so good. You just have to be good at him and understand when to go in, when to just clear, when to when to poke, when to you know like whatever. Uh, just the the casual basic stuff. Like as long as you know how to do that, you know casual melee stuff because melee is a very hard thing for people to understand in duel. Like they just. That's why so many people play mages and hunters and stuff like that because melee is just like i'm not saying mechanically melee is hard like the abilities are just you know left clicking people when they're right next to you i'm just saying the positioning on melee characters isn't as straightforward so people have a hard time with it but anyways what i was getting at is the only problem with camazots is really just like whether you're good or bad at camazots at the end of the day like um after bands there's not a lot of characters that outright beat him i'm not saying there aren't any or there aren't any characters that give him a hard time for the most part but they're like after my bans i can't really think of a character that i'm like oh no if i go against that i just lose like the end you know it, it's over like i went against that character i lose like it just doesn't exist after bans like and that's a part of what makes him so good is you'll notice a lot of these games i'm basically saying yeah this is a camazot's favorite matchup in pretty much every single game well why am i saying that well because it is Uh, unfortunately, he's kind of like pressuring this really hard, so I need to like show some face on it. And I'm gonna miss the, the these minions, but that's just what happens when you're against a Poseidon. Sometimes, if you're not willing to give up the red, it happens. He just has a better wave clear than that. That's why I said Camazot's early isn't like amazing by any means, but it's not bad either. It's just he doesn't have instant wave clear. Is he gonna crack in me? Yeah. Predictable. Predict nothing I can do about it, unfortunately, besides avoid the Kraken. I mean, I can not die, I guess. That's something cool I could do. But uh nothing I can do about the red buff, really. He he's willing to commit everything he has into it, so we give it to him. It is what it is, no problem. No problem. No problem. Bonk. I don't, I don't really like this skin that much, to be honest. The only reason I picked this skin is because it's different than the other two I used. Like, I don't think it's a bad skin. It's just... And I did not get any of those. That's good. That's good. I hate it. I actually hate it when I get farm, to be honest with you. I hate I hate farm. It's the worst thing. But it's actually really good that I'm not getting it. I'm actually happy this Poseidon is playing the way he is, though. Like, super aggro. And trying to get all the farm on the map. Because this is what you should do as Poseidon. Because, well, 
I mean, Poseidon does it very well, first of all. <laughs> but also, against a guy like Kamazots, where not only do I have, like, not the best early game ever, but also I win this matchup super hard later on. So he needs to get any advantage he can right now. He needs to get a gold lead. He, he needs to get an XP lead. He needs to get, um, I don't know, awareness with his Krakens and understand that I have a brain and there's no way I ever fall for that. And he also needs to not die right here for no apparent reason. Oh. I threw that kill, man. I whiffed. I whiffed. Wait, he's staying around? I mean, I did just use both of my ranged abilities, so... Ugh. Wow, why didn't he just run in a straight line? I think he was out if he just ran in a straight line. I mean, I could stay and... Mm. Same thing as usual, same build, same everything. Cookie cutter, beautiful. Easy breezy, beautiful. Cover girl, you're easy. I could stay for that, but I think in return, he'll actually just end up invading my buff anyways. Like, if that makes sense. I'll sit there, I'll get his blue. He'll show up, not be able to kill me. I'll run away and then run back to my blue and he'll end up getting the blue anyways. So I don't really see the point in invading there. Hopefully he did not do the red buff. Oh, he, he brought his Chester into lane. I like this guy. Like, I don't know if he, I would call him good or not. I mean, I haven't seen enough of his gameplay to know if he's good or not, but he's certainly aggressive. Which is which is cool to see, man. Not enough people play aggro in duel. Okay, never mind. Screw this guy. Why is he just utterly destroying me right now? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that at all. I'd say that the... the the turning table of this matchup is probably after defense um but after defense i can start trading with him a bit better and my one will be max so i can clear a bit better but i don't inherently just win the game after defense i'd say that's when i can start you know playing i know it sounds a little bit ironic or whatever because i have a kill but obviously i killed him off of his misplay like he misplayed pretty pretty bad uh, i shouldn't normally have a kill uh this early unless he's just super out of position like he was Bonk. But uh, even if I can't outright win after defense, I will outright win uh, later. I'd say uh, after my third item. Whether my third item is going to be <laughs> these Krakens, dude. I don't even have to, like, do anything. But anyways, after I get, like, a Hydra's or a Serrated, either one would work just fine. Like we are just going to retreat from this guy right now. Oof. He's so aggro. It's actually kind of annoying, though, to be honest. Like, I'm not saying he shouldn't do this. It's just... In what world does he actually kill me here? You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Is he's running out of mana, and what, what world does he actually kill me? Because I still have my ult. That's what you guys gotta consider. I have beads, I have my ult. Maybe I should have ulted that. Hmm. I don't want to be too greedy here. Okay, he's staying. Okay. I'm going to take a tower shot when I land, so I'm going to be pretty low. Alright, yeah, like I said, I didn't want to be too greedy there, but I ended up being pretty greedy anyways. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of felt... I think I peer pressured myself into that, not gonna lie. <laughs> what I mean by that is I kind of was like, dude, you're really not gonna kill him here? Like, you know, I was like, dude, what are you? Like a scaredy cat? You know, like, you're not you're not gonna go in? What a wuss. And so I, I actually, like, peer pressured myself into making a bad play there. It's not even like it's entirely bad. It's just greedy and I don't need to do it for... I, I'm basically doing that for no reason. I'm pressuring a part of the game. Where, like, you know, it makes it more interesting and fun, for sure. But if we're looking at this from just a competitive aspect, I do not need to do stuff like that. All I need to do is farm until mid-game, which we're approaching right now. In fact, you know, kind of already there a little bit. But I'd say mid-game's more about when I actually get to the middle of my items. Uh, whenever we get this serrated finished... 
he should just it should just be gone from there. He's done. Also, especially since I'm gonna get a blink soon and he has no defense. That no defense is gonna bite him in the butt, man. That is also why he's doing so much damage to me though. Because he has no defense. Oh. I thought I uh jumped that. I thought I jumped the whirlpool before it aggroed me. I did not. It's okay though. We don't really need our beads for much else besides the Kraken, so burning it for it is not a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he expected to get that without showing his face at all. Like, I have pretty decent burst damage. Missing my slow, man. Pick up the dual orb, no big deal. As you guys can see though, like my two is arguably my most important ability and I missed my two and then killed him before my next two came up. So it's like, it should, that should go to show that, you know, Kamazos is a good character in general, right? And also this guy has no defense and he's not playing 100% correctly by any means, but it should show you guys that this matchup is uh, pretty easy for Kamazots, I would say. It's just the early game that's a little bit weird. And this is where a lot of dual players actually mess up is they don't understand like certain characters win certain matchups almost like for free i would say um you just have to make it to a certain point of the game and so like you see these people playing like nemesis versus anubis and then getting destroyed early game when nemesis would win that super easy late game you just gotta farm man you just gotta farm. even if you get behind that's okay it's not about staying even with them although that's would be your goal but it's not about staying even it's just about staying close enough to where you don't get where you don't just instantly lose the game kind of thing, you know? Maybe we could be a little annoying here. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky? Why do I still see him, though? I didn't hit him with my one to mark him. Oh my god, what did I just get destroyed by, dude? I mean, he, he does have triple damage, and I took a tower shot or two there. I guess I shouldn't be that shocked, but... I kind of would appreciate it if he didn't do Bull Demon. I don't think he's doing it. I think he's just waiting for his buff to spawn, which is great for me. Because as much as I don't care about him getting Bull Demon on the tower, and I don't, I also don't care about getting it on his tower, I want to get his tower soon and then get Bull Demon for his Phoenix, probably. Or even more likely, just bait the Bull Demon and have him come try to defend it and kill him. Okay. Anyways, as I was saying, of course he's going for Bull Demon. Just like any Poseidon player would. And he's dead. Just like any Poseidon player would be. No big deal. Dude, the blink is so powerful, man. It really is. I only hit one of those archers. <laughs> Versus. Either way, I don't think we're going to be pushing this too much. No big deal, no big deal. But yeah, like as I was saying earlier though about um certain matchups, like this matchup, some people I would I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys have ran this matchup before or thought about it and you think that Poseidon wins only because what's Kamazot that supposed to do in the early game, right? Well, he's not supposed to do much at all. He's supposed to just wait until this stage of the game where he can just simply swoop on this guy to death. Call it a day. That's what he's supposed to do. Because like, even if I didn't get that early kill, even if he stole a bunch of buffs and got ahead of me, he would only be about 1k ahead, 1k ahead, maybe 1, maybe 2 levels ahead. That is not game breaking enough to where like some matchups are just so easily won that you just need to make sure you, you don't get super far behind. You can even be, there are some matchups where you can be 2000 gold behind. You know, you can be down 3 levels and still win it. You just gotta know when you can win. You gotta know what items give you the power curve that you need. Or the survivability. Like some matchups, especially against Anubis. Anubis is a very uh, common god. At like people thinking he's stronger than he is. Like don't get me wrong, Anubis is strong, especially in the early game. But one reason why people think he's strong or stronger than he is is because they get too far behind in the early game before they actually build their defense. If you get defense online versus Anubis, you're in a much better spot. Yeah, this guy is just out of position. I'm just gonna. I was just gonna ult to uh, <laughs> get to the get to the Titan faster, but yeah, man. I mean, that's Camazots in a nutshell right there for you. Just making people surrender and you know 
anywhere from like seven to like 13 minutes, people surrendering, not knowing how to counter him, not knowing what to do. All you have to do guys is just play patient until at least like level nine or 10 when you can actually clear the wave. And you're gonna be in a much better spot. Now let me pull up my uh, volume mixer here to mute smite for you guys. Okay, there we go. All right, as far as the build, cause I know we didn't, uh, Dude, I don't even want to talk about that guy's build. I, that was that was something fierce. I don't know. Uh, Camazots. First of all, let me show you guys. I think I have like one loss on Camazots. Yeah. So I played a fair amount of Camazots in uh, in duel. He is very very strong. I don't even remember what my one loss was. I think it was to it was to another assassin. I know that, and it was when the assassin was like super OP, and I made a lot of misplays that game. I shouldn't have lost. I actually just misplayed a lot. Um, but anyways, so this would be the build pretty much every single game because I don't even think I got to late game in any of those matches. I could be wrong. Who knows? But I'd say you're, you're going boom into, by the way, as far as breastplate of regrowth or breastplate of valor, which one do you want? Honestly, I think they're both sick. Um, regrowth, I mean, uh, valor gives you more cooldown than regrowth does. Regrowth gives you a little bit of power and gives you movement speed when you hit them with your two, you know, when the two comes back to you. So really just go whichever one's your preference. Uh, I'm gonna slam this one on here. And then as far as third item, I don't know which one's better, serrated or uh, hydras. Uh, I will say this hydra or serrated feels better. Uh, hydras might be more DPS in the, in the right situation, but serrated is a more consistent overall item. Movement speed's really powerful. So I'm gonna suggest for you guys to do that. Boom, boom, boom. And then fifth item here is usually when I would probably go my anti-heal if we need it, boom. And then last item, it's up to you. You can go Crusher or you can go Heartseeker. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Boom. You can go Crusher or Heartseeker last. I usually like Crusher because the Crusher proc works on things like Bull Demon. It works on buffs. It works on uh, the Titan. And also, even more importantly, actually, you get attack speed, which, of course, helps you kill the Titan and stuff like that. So I would recommend Crusher over Heartseeker, but really just go whichever one is your preference. Now, what if they don't have any healing, or maybe you maybe they do have healing, but you just want to use Camazots as two? Because a reminder, Camazots two does have anti-heal. If you consistently land that, maybe you think that you don't need anti-heal at all, right? You could go Crusher Heartseeker. I notice that you're going to be 50% pen with this build. Personally, I think that's fine. I, I think there's nothing wrong with going 50% pen. It's a little bit cringe. It's a little bit OCD bothering, but I think this is the most DPS efficient build you can go um, with the 50% pen. I think it's the most powerful, but some honorable mentions in case you just really, really hate 50% pen, you can go dominance and that's more pen, but it's different. You know, it goes outside of the normal penetration cap because it's only on your auto attacks, of course. Uh, you can go crit. You can go, uh, you can go a last item Deathbringer if you want. You can go, uh, honestly, anything. And any of these power items would work. You can go defense. You can go whatever. Um, I would say you slam, you can slam a Magi's here. Hold on. Let's go Glyph, Magi's Revenge. Where is it? I'm going to throw this here as an honorable mention. And as for your other defensive item, if you're against a Magical, you go Genji's or you go Pestilence. Uh, most, for the most part, though, I would go Genji's in most games. Uh, now, th with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I know it was a bit of a different one because we got a bunch of surrenders and stuff like that. Uh, but Camelot's is just too powerful, man. And nobody, nobody's queuing the game mode. What can I say? Uh, well, I appreciate you guys clicking on the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.